Well, Mr. Prime Minister, it's great to see you again. Uh, we've been in many, many meetings together, but uh, it's good to have you here in the Oval Office. And, uh, and you're welcome, despite despite the World Cup match. Yeah, sorry. And in spite of that, uh, you know, you're one of our strongest allies and personal friends, and a uh, great, great personal ally as well. Together, we're stepping up our protection for democratic values across the world, and uh, and we're, you know, uh, including standing strong with Ukraine. You've, you've been very, very stalwart, and we look to you as well to make sure we have a coherent European response, all Europe to response to Ukraine. And uh, Russia is just uh, continuing to act in ways that are almost unbelievable. <laughs> Together, we're promoting human rights and the rule of law, and uh, we're going to be co-hosting uh, the next summit, on the, on the Summit of Democracies in March, which uh, we'll be together again. And uh, there's a lot that we have to work on together. Uh, and uh, together, we're working on uh, how to uh, uh, keep a free and open Indo-Pacific, uh, and uh, quite frankly, uh, meet the challenges of China. Simply put, our companies, our countries have been so far in just lockstep in what we've done in our vision for the future. And so today, I look forward to discussing uh, how we can further deepen our relationship and securing our supply chains to strengthen our transatlantic partnership. And thank you again, Mr. Minister. We've had a great relationship with both our countries personally, and I look forward to discussing a lot more. Thank you, thank you so much, and also thank you for hosting me. It's the first time in my five Fire. visits that the fireplace uh, is on. Um, and uh, typically, I would start with the economy, and then I would have told the press that we are the second biggest investor in the US, and the United States is the biggest investor in Europe. But I think we should talk Ukraine. And we have seen this terrible footage coming out of the Nepro this weekend, where innocent children, men, and women Again, we were in a rocket fire, and this apartment building was hit, and many people died. Um, these are horrible pictures, and I think it, it strengthens even more our resolve to stay with Ukraine. And I want to commend you, personally, and the United States, for your leadership. I'm convinced that history will judge that in 2022, if the United States would not have stepped up like you did, that things would have been very different at the moment. In the fight between Ukraine and Russian aggression. And uh, we have decided to spend another two and a half billion on yes. helping the Ukraine war effort. If you compare this to the size of America, it will be over 50 billion dollars, 50 billion dollars. We uh, have the intention to join what you are doing with Germany on the Patriot uh, project. Uh, so the air uh, defense system, uh, I think that is important that we join that. I discussed it also this morning with uh, Olaf Scholz of Germany. Uh, and then on accountability, we can never accept uh, that uh, Putin and Russia get away with this. So accountability, uh, to take them to court, to make sure that this all gets done in also in a legal way is crucial. And I know that you and I are working on this. But again, uh, your leadership, the United States, you personally, has been crucial. So again, I want to thank you for that. And let's stay closely together this year. And hopefully, things will move um, yeah, forward in a way which is acceptable for Ukraine. They have done so much, and this year will be important. So yeah, again, thank one you. of the things that I just add very quickly, Europe continues to step up, respond to Russian action. There's more to do, and uh, we, uh, we have to stay together. And it's been really, really, really important that you've been there every single step.